Hey. All right, there you go. You should have recorded that first bit, Stephen, when you went through the sun. No, I know. I should have. I forgot to. I forgot. To. <laughs> Recording has now started, though. So save your yeah, best yeah, material yeah. for now. <laughs> I've seen that. I love children. So, I really love children, by the way. <laughs> Couldn't eat a whole one. Couldn't eat a whole one, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, I've got a few things to say. You know, first of all, you know, we wish Raina and Eric mm. all the best because they, they're poorly with uh, COVID at the moment. So, you know, everyone from Solar Chat, if you're, if you're watching, Raina, Eric, get well soon. Mm. Um, the second thing is, is in February, on February the 18th, um, there is um, at the BAA, which is the British Astronomical Association, um, there is um, a solar section sort of like afternoon where there'll be sort of like a series about um, two or three talks, I think, in the afternoon and sort of like a meeting there um, that probably people here might be interested in. So what I'll do is um, when I get all the information, I'll just put it up on, you know, like Solar Chat. So um, it's free to, for anyone to attend. Um, so it'll be quite interesting. I think Lynn is going to go through, you know, like the solar cycle so far and um, a few, th you know, other people, you know, going to give a talk. So that would be quite good. Um, Laura, who was going to do um, a little section, you know, on the Pro-Am project, um, she can't make it again tonight, but hopefully um, at some point she might um, be able to. Oh, gosh, everything's going wrong for me here. Um, is everybody else seeing a flickering or is it just, yeah. just, just on one square? Mm -hmm. One screen. One screen. Mm -hmm. All right. OK. Um, I don't know whether that's me or whether that's somebody yeah. else. <laughs> um, and also the other thing was about the prominences. Um, I've noticed, you know, like there's when you go on the web, you know, that there is very few sort of like um, sites available, you know, that actually tell you what all of these prominences are. And there doesn't seem to be sort of like a, a classification system. There's sort of like a few sort of like bits and bobs here and everywhere. And I thought it would be quite a good thing because we've got so many images coming through and so many people are seeing prominences to try and get together sort of like a catalogue of them um, and try to put them together. So it'll like be a little solar chat catalog um, that we can use like to reference. So it'd be sort of like quiescent prominences and active prominences. And as we acquire more and more images of them, it's you know easier um, to like make a classification system. So um, I just wanted to plug that as well. I think that Stuart that he was going to speak a little bit more about prominences, were you? <laughs> um, <laughs> not entirely. I, it was more a case of trying to um, open it across the board to see, you know, what um, the general opinion is and how to approach this, and you know, mm. what actually do we want to do and how how should we do it? But as you say, you know, a catalog. I, I guess starting off with, okay, collect all the images and then. Um, sort them into, you know, different categories, if you like, so we can mm. then uh, assign a prominence type to each of those categories is, I think, is an excellent starting point. And then no doubt we'll find stuff that mm. doesn't actually fit into mm. any <laughs> any particular one. And then we can have a, an argument about, you know, which is, you know, is it this prominence, is it that prominence, whatever. Um, but I, I think you raise a, a really important point about the classification system or other classification systems because there are a number out there mm. or, you know, which is right, which is wrong. Um, you know, how, how, how do we address that? Um, do we use multiple systems to classify the prominences that we see or do we stick to one particular system or do we create our own and try and push that I mean you know I'd just be interested to know what people thought really just on 
On, just one, on, just one other thing. I think, I think Warren's the uh, the animation from animation king. Yeah. So, so uh, go on. <laughs> I mean, absolutely Come fantastic. Uh, you know, looked at you uh, animations. You, you listed them all um, earlier, and uh, absolutely superb. Um, still images don't really convey the dynamics mm. of these things. And, you know, each one seems to be unique. It, it changes in its own particular way or whatever. Is there a way of capturing that other than, you know, it's either a quiet one or it's a dynamic one? Well, that doesn't really tell you anything. Well, yeah, certainly. I think, was it Claire and Peter? I think you, um, uh, you know, did an animation of the Northern Prom and you could quite clearly see that it was a mm -hmm. Tornado. If you mm -hmm. had a single image, you wouldn't have known that it was a solar tornado. Exactly, that's right. There was one image of it though that did actually look like you know like um, wool. Mm -hmm. You know that there, there's a mm -hmm. thread. But there was actually a twist in it. So you from mm -hmm. one image you could do it. Just even on the basics of a active or quiescent. Like if something stays there for two days so retrospectively you know well it it, it it's quiescent because it stayed there for a long length of length of time but mm. you didn't know that at day one or you know in the first 20 minutes you saw it mm, true because yeah you, um i think that you know certainly it would be really really good to be able to gather together you know and virtually make you know our own little publication virtually um of you know you could have you know a whole page of like quiescent um prominences and uh, the range that you can get because you can get them all shapes and sizes and everything mm. like that. so it gives you know an idea that when you look at that you can see all of these different types and it gives you an idea but then you know like what Stuart was saying yeah mm. I really we ought to have a page of animations uh, mm. because that can show like a whole different level uh, mm. what's going on in there Definitely. well if you if, if you had them time sequence so yes you know, let's say it's a um i don't know what well, typically what do you do um 40 minutes an hour two hours ahead i don't know yeah uh, but you could say right start middle and end of this sequence this is how it how it changed um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think particularly with uh, I'll pronounce it wrong. The desperation, brusque, the, you know, the liftoffs mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. At times, you don't know if they're just floating, mm -hmm. or are they actually lifting off? Unless you mm -hmm. watch it over time, mm -hmm. and you know, if you you take an animation, you could just take frames from it at different and say, yeah, this one just was static, or this one actually lifted off and disappeared. Mm. Mm. There was one that I did a little while ago where there were actually two liftoffs on the surface. You might remember that one, Warren. And um, I was looking yeah. back on that yesterday. And, and and you're right. When you look at the image, it looks like two just floating proms. Mm. But in 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 reality, they they lifted both lifts off the surface at the same time, or off the sun, I should say, at the same time, and mm. then just faded out. Um, into the background so that was very obvious that they were they were lifting off from the sun they weren't just floating above the sun yeah. that happened in a well, was probably over 40 minutes perhaps yeah and then i was fooled by that i had posted that one the one on it was on the uh, southern pole that i thought was lifting off looked like it was lifting off the animation but it was still there the next day it was just <laughs> moving across basically I'd never seen one like that before. I mean, there was so much movement. I was sure it was gone. But mm. then I, th I think it was Alexander Post and went, oh, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> That's another interesting term is just the floating drum. It depends on the resolution. Like you look at the meta, you know, just a full disc and there's something that looks fully detached. But if you zoom in, you find that there's actual trails of plasma. So at some point of zoom, is there always a trail of plasma or is there times when it truly is just a separated ball of plasma right. that's levitated by magnetism away from everything else? So even in levels of zoom, you do get a different uh, impression as to what it actually is. Yeah. I would have thought that if you had a, like a floating prom um, and it was staying there for a long time, if you zoomed in, 
to a high enough power, you would see that it would have little fine threads, little tethers. Mm. Um, I'm not, not, not always I'm true. Not, I'm not sure whether I've ever seen, you know, like a floating ball of plug just hanging there and not either lifting away, floating away or coming back down. I would have thought. Mm. I feel like I have, but maybe I don't have as good a gear as you do. But I, I feel like it's fairly common uh, for me, at least with these full disc views I get, but I probably don't see the streamers. But you know, all those things can be, the animations aren't, aren't that hard now with uh, current software to make a catalog of, of, you know, images that aren't just still images. It's just gathering the data mm -hmm. is a problem, you know, getting the recordings because yeah. it's not easy to record these things and not everyone here. Uh, of course, that might be a good uh, motivator to get people to learn how to do animations but they're very time consuming as you all know mm -hmm. and uh getting them lined up with each other and appearing to be movies when it's an eight hour time lapse is is an art in itself um, it's just the sheer amount of data yeah, yeah absolutely. storage that's problem right. and having yeah. a cloudless six hour period to do yeah, yeah. yeah. i think it's a great idea for active regions they're in their own numbering but it's Nothing similar for prominences, are there? No. No. Mm -mm. So, so no <laughs> sorts of uh, identifying them and telling that this is uh, prominence uh, number. Uh, prominence 500. number. Mm. Yeah. Just getting people to call them prominences would be a major achievement <laughs> rather than <laughs> yeah. solar of flares. Because <laughs> you, know, you see it's that a player. Every, no. yeah, every first, Im first time imager, always they start out by calling it a solar flare and then yeah you have to feel like the sap you know but but explaining it that's not a solar flare. Mm -hmm. so when it's, are you going to start this project alexander uh, now <laughs> okay. it might take all year <laughs> well we're going to have a, a three-year period here where we're probably going to see every type of prominence known to man and we can also use existing you know animations oh exactly yeah yeah yeah. That's... i've got a ton of them myself uh they're not animations though they're they're Mm -hmm. Of course, like you said, some of them don't need the animation. Some of them do. No, you know. because, you know, like I've always wanted to try and do it with my own images, put them <laughs> together. But when I actually look at them, I think, mm, well, I haven't really got that very good examples of certain ones because I always miss them, like uh, post flare loops. I never get to see post flare loops. Mm. It's something that drives me mad. Coronal loops, too. They call them they don't last loops. long. They don't no, last long no. at all. They were really vibrant on this flare this past week. Uh, yeah. I watched oh, it on, yeah. on SDO because we were cloudy. <laughs> it's the weather though, isn't it, Alexandra? I'd love to see an X-Class flare. That's on my bucket list. <laughs> Do you know that, I mean, uh, to stray a little bit, but during the last solar maximum in October of 2013, at the Peach State Stargaze, there was a four-hour period where there was an X-Class flare that went off for almost four hours. And it was humongous uh, and it just kept going the whole time. And I'm at this, uh, I was at this outdoor uh, field with a bunch of nighttime astronomy guys and they couldn't care less, man. They didn't even, they didn't even mm -hmm. want to look at it. I was like, are you out of your mind? I think I've shown that photo a million times, but it was oh, a gigantic, running around. gigantic X-class flare. It looked like a, a giant river and it seemed like it was taking up a fifth of the sun's surface and it was just unbelievable. And I'm out here by myself, you know, there's 30 guys inside listening to a presentation about variable stars or something. <laughs> like you want to see a variable star, come here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this one's variable. So, yeah. so do, should, should we have um, a specific section set up on solar chat then for people to... Sure, we can make, we can make sections image. for anything. We've, we've yeah. been through quite a number of sections that some some were successful and some weren't but you know we have nothing but space now and uh pl plenty of although i will say our our uh that when i get in trouble and i can't fix something the guy that i pay to come in and fix things is is about to die unfortunately he's got brain cancer um, yeah. so either i'm gonna have to learn a lot more or we're gonna have to find another consultant but yeah we can set up new forms uh that guy's name by the way was mark hamill if you hadn't oh. caught that oh, before well, yeah mark hamill uh, real nice guy. He's a federal government uh, retiree also that's been doing uh, BB, PHP BB consulting for 15 years, mm -hmm. making a fortune. But um, anyway, I hired him because his name was Mark Hamill. I, I'd never seen any of his work <laughs> at all. <laughs> but, you know, he, he's he's settled. I mean, I don't want to go into that, but you know, he's okay with it. And we're just, we may have to find somebody else to do it. 
but yeah, we, we can definitely do that. <clears throat> Another interesting thing about um, prominences is that they're once they're on the limb and a filament, there's even less classification of filament types. And you know, that's a very good point. What filament, mm -hmm. like you see a hedgerow prominence and you see it come up onto the disc pretty clear and you go, okay, we don't call it a hedgerow filament anymore. Mm -hmm. And true. Another, and, you know, inconsistency in this hobby is that whole mm -hmm. prominence filament thing. Yeah. You know, yes. Makes it hard to explain to someone that's new. Yeah, then you got filiprom where you smash. Filiprom. <laughs> Right. I yeah. think Theo Ramakers made up, made up that name. Yeah. Uh, Theo Ramakers is the guy who coined that phrase uh, a long time ago. He's here in Atlanta too. And uh, that's also ridiculous. Yeah. Well, yeah. So maybe we ought to try and classify um, filaments together with the prominences because I'm guessing what you could do is that you would have your prominence classification but then you'd have to have a mirrored um, <clears throat> group that what they look like as a filament you know mm. it would be the same thing um mm. so you, would, you would need mm. to call both the same thing wouldn't you really mm. so you'd have to be able to identify both on on the disc or on the limb mm. there's, there's one paper somewhere that we found that broadly puts filaments into quiescent and then they talk about non-attached filaments or filaments that are in non-active areas of the sun so you see a big filament there's no active regions nearby and that was a very clearly different thing so obviously if you wanted a post flare loop a prominence well if that was that's probably going to look to be something very much rotate on as a filament it's going to be centered around an active region it won't be one of these separate um, filaments so that could in itself be a hint to uh, the categorizing of where they come from or where they're going to be situated yeah because certainly you've got um, a category of prominences that are associated with um, active regions and you've mm. got prominences associated with non-active regions which is mm. The quiescent areas definitely so yeah mm. come together because i guess that when you see um like in the active regions you'll see um arch filaments won't you so arch filaments i presuming on the limb would look like little surges wouldn't they yeah or, um, or those dark like little, little loops little yeah loops. you sort of like see like little spray like almost like mm like sprays don't you from the edge from where an active region is mm. um, whereas they would be arch films um yep. the actual solar disc that that brings up a question of you know when they talk about fibrils compared to spicules around mm. active areas are fibrils are they going those going to be actually surge proms if they're on the limb yes. yeah i did look that up um, and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but we looked that up. What's the difference between a fibril and everything? And I find I'm I'll have a look because I did look that up actually. So I'll let you know. Mm. Just curious with the um it's a great idea. Um the overall purpose is it to create category on solar chat, uh, which is great, and that's that's helpful to so many people, beginners, amateurs potentially a whole range of people or would it be made wide to a wider audience um yes. you think ultimately we, we've right. already got so, a couple of uh published things on solar chat that we've done with members yep. that are published widely uh one is Brilliant. the layers Thanks. of the sun the chromosphere and the depths of certain features that alexander worked really hard on uh, so it, it would be made to be distributed uh mm. throughout the community not just on solar chat and okay. we can always so then, you know, publish it, you know, in the BAA journal as well, because they're always after things like that. So, you know, we, yeah. Um, we do an official publication if we wanted to, yeah. uh, but it would be, a, it would have to be a, a group consensus. Right. And to be, the purpose of it would be widely distributed to uh, help the hobby have a more, mm, exactly. uh, a better categorization of solar prominences in, in the future. Because the Definitely. thing we did on the layers of the sun's chromosphere is widely distributed, and I see it pop up everywhere all the time. 
mm-hmm. uh, because I the the couple of mistakes I made uh, in <laughs> spelling <laughs> show up everywhere, and um, it, it was a very good document. So yeah, it would be for wide distribution. Mm. Okay, Here's, excellent. And so on the categories then that we that are decided upon, um, will there be a criteria? Do you think we need a criteria that? Yeah, that have to be. You know, a written description yeah. with criteria, I guess, a loose criteria, you know, and mm. it may turn out that they may not be able to be categorized or there may be exactly. there may be some uh, some shapes or things like uh, in, in galaxy types. You know, there's a lot of galaxy types that defy any category and can't be categorized. So they throw in the miscellaneous yeah. category, you know, miscellaneous shape. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a thing to look into. Mm. Excellent. And just quickly. It'd be fun to do, though. Yeah. Oh very, yeah, very uh, quickly. I I've, I always try to finish what I start, and that was the solar prominent or the solar oh. flare that went off at the mm-hmm. Peak State Stargaze for over four hours. Do you see that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a lovely filament as well. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, lovely hedgerow. Yeah, and that was back on <laughs> October twenty fifth of twenty fourteen. And like I say, I sat outside and watched that with six telescopes set up, three visual, three imaging scopes by myself for almost three hours. <laughs> at an astronomy event. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> Georgia, man, I tell you, all the things you heard are right. <laughs> Is that right, Sean? That's right. <laughs> so, Martin, um, can you hear us? Okay. I know your video hey, is going back and forth. Soon? Can you hear me see them? Yes, we can. Thank you. I just okay, wanted to make right. sure because your video is jumping all over the place. Problems with my laptop. I keep getting a, a flashing screen for some reason. Yeah, my... so we're getting that too. Where, where are you? I'm in Brisbane, Australia. Well, you know, uh, I think we can hey, tolerate that from around the other side of the planet. We can tolerate a little bit of <laughs> yeah. shaky video. <laughs> Welcome, by the way. Okay. Thank you. Sorry yeah, it's to interrupt. Good to see you, Martin. <laughs> Beg your pardon? It's lovely to see you. Oh, thank you. I've been well, trying to yeah. and now I've finally done it. Ah, very <laughs> good. I noticed that someone had closed captioning turned on. Is that one of our regulars? Um, okay, because if there's something I can do to make it more uh, accessible to, you know, someone with hearing issues or whatever, vision issues, let me know. Of course, if you have vision issues, there ain't a whole lot I can do. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish, do you know Isabel Grog? Alexandra, she's in Scotland, mm-hmm. and she's an air traffic controller in Scotland. You've probably seen her on the on the. Well, you don't go to Facebook much, but Izzy Grog is her name, and she is a solar astronomer there and runs a little Charlie Bates thing there. And um, she has a program that she does for the blind, for solar astronomy, and I support wow. it, you know, with materials and telescopes and things. But they don't need telescopes. But she she has these. Uh, I know I'm straying on a different topic, but she has these sun paper mache suns that have different features on them and it reminds me of the prominence categorization thing because she has some really excellent reproductions of prominences that are tactile enough for the students to feel and even has them in different wavelengths and and shows how they would feel in her in her uh, impression of how they would feel because you know how calcium k looks like uh, spackle paint Mm. or it's got a real strange appearance compared to hydrogen alpha and white light so she's managed to create these tactile balls that reflect that mm-hmm. to these students and i think that's fantastic that's wow it would be amazing awesome. to have her come and speak on here yeah, you know, yeah. maybe i should invite her yes really? I'll I'll be really with galaxies and such but not uh not solar stuff so that is interesting mm. what was that you just said i've seen that sort of thing done with uh, galaxies and such oh, but really? not with solar yeah, we, we had about three years ago, we went through that setting it up for the school for the uh, for the blind um, that she lives near. And I don't know, she just had that particular passion. And uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, my wife says I should always talk more about what we do, um, but I just never do. I mean, even you guys didn't know that. Maybe I should <laughs> do some kind of publication. On um, one of the um, solar sites, there's Sounds of the Sun. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. where um, one of the NASA... Or heard that, I should say. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did some work with uh, my magnetometer, converting the magnetic effect of um, the solar wind into sounds, mm. use sonification and so on. 
Um, and that's a, a YouTube video. So I can send a link if anybody's interested. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if I can. But, but that, that, that could be great for visually impaired because obviously we can't see the aurora mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. here. The, NASA yeah. did a lot of that for uh, Jupiter on the Juno mission. They, they converted the uh, layers of the atmosphere into sound waves <clears throat> yeah, for yeah. people to listen to. And you know, Star Trek, the motion picture, also did that for the V'ger probe. Uh, and well, Okay, you guys aren't Star Trek fans. Uh, <laughs> let's see, Stuart Green. Hey, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll stick the link on. Um, so came back with a porn site. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Pastor Scott took with me. <laughs> uh, Alter ego. <laughs> but uh, so, so just going back to uh, prominences and filaments and so on. So are we going to have um, a, a particular section then that we can dump images to, um, and collect like them over the next, next year or so, or whatever, um, yeah. and. And then we can start categorizing and, and you know collecting them into groups and um, see see how it pans out and how they fit into current categorization schemes and whether we need to invent some new categories for ones that uh, don't quite okay. fit. Yeah, that'd be great. What about well, yeah, some because... of... okay. Oh, is this some of the terms that you know uh, Warren? put up something recently and you know crown proms um polar proms is that a, they're just duplication like if it's just a polar it's in the north and the south that's but does doesn't say something else about it so will there be more than one categorization for a given prom it's uh it's in the pro it's a polar because it's in near the pole and it's something else now you're thinking you're yeah you're yeah. going to be the assistant for this program polar crown polar crown filaments are you know a category of um prominences filaments in their own right um because they do actually um move northwards um during the solar cycle and then they come back down again and start progressing up again um so they are um not grouped with you know the the ones in the active region band um they are a completely different category um of um prominences filaments so yes they would have it they would be a category on themselves but you see again you know like in these um classifications that you find on the web nobody talks about polar crown filaments at all um it's mm -hmm the classification at all and yet they're a completely different group of filaments to the active region belt so you know they would have to be you know in a category on their own but they're also quiescent yes they are so that's why i'm saying you'd need to have like they do for um you know sunspots you have more than one um you know thing to denote um categories or classifications for them. I suppose what you could have is you yeah you would you would have definitely you'd have two main categories so you'd have your quiescent and you'd, you'd have your active yep. and under the quiescent you would then it's like a family tree isn't it you would have a branch on its own of being the polar crown filaments and then you have the other branch being in active region belt wouldn't you okay. so are they are all polar um proms polar crown or are they two separate things who knows we'll have to uh, find yeah. it that way hence the need for the project <laughs> exactly yeah. we would we'll have to get <laughs> observing <laughs> okay so i've already created a conference on the forum for it it's called the uh the solar prominence filament classification project okay excellent so that's up there and it's about six down we can put it wherever you like alexander i know you like to have them where you want them should we have it as number two then? Okay, there you go. <laughs> Prioritize. Alexander yeah, speaks, exactly. I obey. I've learned that that's a good policy. <laughs> so, so I guess at the end of January, Alexander, whatever's in the challenge will be done. I'll just transfer that, that into the actual thing. It's just to get people 
going. Otherwise, if we just do that as a subheading, nobody's ever going to look in it. Right. So we need to get people thinking all the time. And it would really help as well um, when you, I know a lot of images have been submitted already. Um, but I think there's only sort of like Luca that's actually gone through and thought about um, how he would classify, you know, his prominence as everybody else has just added their images. You know, it really, really helped me and everybody else. If you could, um, I know it's going to be a guess because who knows? Who, nobody's going to be right. But what you th what you think that your prominence is, just try and think about it. And sort of yeah, like, yeah. And we do have a, you should develop a, a, stru a structural framework for, to, for the broad classifications and then mm. add to it as we go along and people can use those terms if possible mm. and you're not going to get newcomers doing this because they're never going to read the post to begin with but you know there's yeah. a mountain there's a mountain of data on this form mm. and you know technically you could do this project without any new images because there's well yeah you could just filter through it but then yeah. you know like it, it your thing is there are certain people on the forum that don't like their images being shared um, and well, so, that's their problem because that's already in the terms of service on here. I mean, I mean, you don't want to uh, make anybody upset, but well, no, yeah. exactly. You know, so if people are, you know, active in the project and really want to do it and get really excited about it, um, right. then you know that. Well, if nothing know, else, the uh, they the, want to be published. The uh, frequency of their occurrence uh, could be determined by, you know, but unfortunately, there's no way to to search images on here, you'd have to search the text that the person put with the image. Well, yes. I think it's divide and conquer as well, isn't it? Don't leave it down to one person to go through and find right. the image. Right. Everybody should find their own yeah. images and yeah. submit those if yeah. they're interested. And by everybody, you mean the, the 15 people that, that actually participate? And well, <laughs> you know, we've got 3,300 members. So, <laughs> so, the, so, so the, the ones who participate will produce Right. the best images presumably you know so. this is the most we've ever had on one of these meetings and that's that's yes. i'm really happy about that it's 14 mm -hmm. but you know who knows how many people view them afterwards because we were put through mm -hmm. recorded yeah. meeting on the on the website mm -hmm. so, but i think it's so a people, fun thing to do because um when you're actually looking at the sun yes you're really enjoying looking at the sun but it's also good to expand your mind and to try and challenge yourself yeah. and say what am i actually seeing and try and learn yeah. Bit more and you know i think that you just get more out of you know like observing the sun rather than just going for a pretty picture and a pretty picture if you develop something like this uh, to start with or if someone does or we do um mm -hmm. i can put a sidebar on the main page that has a very quick image title image title image of various prominences and and you know mm -hmm. please classify your prominence image yeah I can put that to That's... appear on every page mm -hmm. you know to help gather data I mean, we can do yeah. anything we want with this with the software. It's just a matter of setting it up and determining the structure. Mm -hmm. And right. what you do there, Stephen, right, so that you don't discourage anybody from from actually posting an image because they're not certain of what type it is or whatever. Right, that's right. In I front guess of, you yeah. could have a box there that just says, "Look, uh, I can do that." Uncertain, whatever. Yeah, just just so that you don't discourage anybody from. Right. Right. Oh yeah, right. oh yeah. Because not everybody is going to know what it is, you know. Because sometimes, you know, I look at mine and I go, "What on earth is that? I've never seen anything like it before." Because usually, every prominence we see is so unique, Ooh. you know. Never seen a shape like that before, you know. There's been yeah. some, you know, in the last week that I've gone, "Wow, that's weird." Yeah, <laughs> that that uh, one spindle that I had, you know, mm -hmm. it was just showing, and I thought, "Oh, you know, this is just a." typical maybe tornadic one but then it went away so fast it may have been a surge that i didn't see happening in the mm. first place so it was like i got to put that one up and see if anybody else has seen something like that one because it was so narrow and didn't last that long this is also a great i mean the wheels are turning you know this is also a great opportunity for me to get something named after myself Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a, it was a stephen ramsden prom exactly see yeah. how it just flows off the tongue yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if we can do it with yeah, a Ramsden iPhones. Ramsden Any, Anything that's out of the ordinary, we can call it Stephen, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Ramsden. Uh, yeah. Well, there's that. Um, I have a crater on the moon. Just... That's Grandpa <laughs> Jesse no, no, Ramsden no, no. has a crater. No, there's like in the Aurora. There's a... Yeah, the purple ones. Yeah, the Steve. There's a Steve. Steve, that's yeah. an acronym. Does that really count? I mean, it's an acronym. <laughs> Come on. Solar <laughs> terrestrial is something or another. 
Yeah, yeah. okay. Because Pranvera gets like meteorites and, and asteroids named after her every week, man. You know, because she's a hot little European chick or whatever. So all these old guys are naming stuff after her every time you turn around. <laughs> Who's going to name something after me? That's what I want to know. Okay. So the, um, uh, if I can, I'm going to share a screen here for a minute. I don't know if yeah. this is an example of the polar crown aurora. I'll let uh, Alexandra uh, make a comment on that. So in this, um, have you got the pair of them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Active region. So this this ring across here, Alexander, would you call those polar or just yes. coincidentally yeah, not far enough? Yeah. North? No, no, no. I think they are. Yes, yeah. definitely. Because I've I um looked up a paper about the polar crown filaments and sent it through to James because he was asking about it. Usually they're pretty much horizontal, you know, like with the mm. you know, like most filaments in the active region tend to be sort of like a, a diagonal you know, and move around like that. Polar crown filaments tend to be sort of like, you know, like a horizontal in a circle, you know. Yeah, like a crown. Top. A shallow arc across. Yeah, but you've also got to be careful as well because, you know, like at certain times of the year, um, one, it's tilted hmm. and tipped. And so, you know, sometimes we can see the, the north, uh, pole easier than the south and you can't see what's going yeah. around in the south and then at other times it's the other way and tilted round. and so also this would all depend on someone aligning the north south poles on their image exactly <laughs> so you know that's why it can sometimes get a little bit confusing but yeah there is um um i think if you use tilting sun and put you know like that grid map on it i think pole down filaments are um designated from a certain um latitude, latitude. Yeah. And downwards mm. um, again i would have to don't quote me on it i'd need to have a look at this paper again but they're certainly above a certain equity you know like latitude when I'm brian, brian is that that one that lasted so long i'm oh, sorry oh go ahead Gordon. but is that the uh Filament that it basically almost stretched across across the whole top at one point. It could be. I've lost. I was scanning trying to find. I had polar crown images, but I just couldn't find uh -huh. them on short notice. So I stumbled across this one. But I wanted to use this one as an example. Like it, I always wondered, what is this going to look like as a filament when it rotates onto the disc, mm -hmm. or what's this going to look like a prominence yeah. when it gets over to the limb? So that's the. Um, you know, part of that dynamic, uh, ongoing dynamic structure. And there's umpteen different, you know, we've got, this looks very much like hedgerow. Does the rest of this look like hedgerow when it reaches the limb or what happens? But um, anyway, I'll uh, stop screen there now. Yeah, because certainly, Brian, like with that image, you've got, you've got that beautiful prominence on the actual um, limb. If you had, you were lucky enough to take that, you know, same prominence as a filament, say two or three days later, it would be good to, you know, the two images together so that you can see um, what the prominence would look like compared, to, you know, mm. to the filament. Right, and are there characteristics nice of it as a, a filament? Pair. Are there yes. yeah, filamentary characteristics that identify that shape while it's mm. prominent? Hmm. Yeah, so it'd be it's quite good to have them as a pair. That just added There's probably enough dynamic yeah. change over the course of a few days too that what it would have looked like if we mm -hmm. had a different perspective to see it as an actual filament and then it's changed in the two or three days it takes to become a filament or vice versa a filament to a prominence so it's always a bit of a yeah I, guess, of my mm. I bet somebody who was a professional who was really good with software technique could probably do like a 3d modeling um, and you know, take you know, like the high <clears throat> references of the the prominence, and then rotate it round, and you'd see what it would look like as a film. Oh, that'd be great, yeah, that'd be clever. Cool. And that's I'm a standard not. Adobe program now. The, that you oh, don't even it? have to be a professional to do that. It's yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Stephen, you could do that then. Yeah, sure, man. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> just volunteered. Yeah, that's no problem. That's where all those those silly uh, videos are coming from, where you take the sun and you make the filament move or you make the prominence look like a river down the sun, you know, just in the software, 
And I'm people, not saying that. Oh, yeah. People publish on social media all the time where they take a still image of something and make something appear to flow like a river. And, uh, oh. you know, you can make a solar image now without even owning a telescope or going outside with software because it's the AI is so good now. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another story. Altogether. That's like the guy on Instagram. What's his name? Andrew McCarthy. That like every week he comes out with some fantastic image no one's ever heard of before. And he gets all this press everywhere about it. And uh, anyway, I'm, I, I, I digress again. Mm -hmm. Not saying that. Well, I got to depart a little early, so it's good to see everybody. Hi, Shawnee Poo. Mm -hmm. See y'all next man. month. Bye. Bye. Sean. Take care, Sean. Take care. Bye. Bye, Sean. Bye. So to start with, Alexandria, you'd like when posting a picture of a um, prominence that we have a crack at naming it, which is exactly the opposite to what we've always done is not name it because it's guaranteed to be wrong. So yeah. <laughs> it's never going to be wrong. So just have a crack you know, it. we yeah. deliberately do not name <laughs> the features <laughs> that we put on our images because, you know, there has been occasion that people have responded. Um, oh, you mean you're getting, uh, yeah, you're, you're getting, what's it called? Uh, mansplained. But uh, <laughs> people are telling you you're wrong about everything. Yeah, it's like in the birding yeah. hobby. Whenever you identify a bird on the internet, the 20 people go on immediately and tell you how stupid mm. you are and how you're wrong about everything. Yeah, we call that birds planning. <laughs> Not quite that bad. So you'd like to? Um, that would be the starting point. You'd like people to actually try and um, categorize that at the point of posting it. As oh, you don't have to categorize it at all, and we can try and categorize it, you know, together. Right. Mm -hmm. Can have, you know, like in the medical profession, it's always a consensus opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so um, nobody is, you know, like the solar god, and they know everything. So um, it, usually, it it would be a consensus opinion, you know, mm -hmm. and everyone thought that yeah this is a quiescent one from such and such then probably is so you know we're as good as anybody else for working things out aren't we Ooh, what mm -hmm. have you found? hey read that in cloudy nights post from 2006 what's that say it says for some time now i've been wondering about the subject just what kind of prominence classifications are there i took the time to read the fascinating article of david nisley observing the oh, sun yeah. at h alpha which has an understandable, importantly, illustrated classification. Are there more illustrated classifications? Could I learn more about just what kind of prominence I'm looking at? Hi, Jonah. Uh, Joe, Johan. No. <laughs> I do not know of any better source. Bye. Yeah. David oh, that Walter. was from Walter. Look at that. That's from Walter. Cox. This is yeah. poor little Walter. <laughs> yeah. Good old Listen, Walter. David <laughs> often gives very detailed um, explanations, explanations of what people have posted with if they've straight from actually having it factual so you've in that last thing that brian mentioned you've now got quiescent sol uh polar crown prom hedro because you mentioned when that could be a hedro at the same time well yeah um, well this is what i think probably what you'll find is that they're going to be like branches in a family tree aren't they mm. so going to be um is it from active or quiescent and then yes or no and then is it you know this shape yes or no or is it this shape yes or no or is it you know in above this certain latitude yes or no isn't it so you're mm -hmm. going to have like almost like you know you, you're going to be asking questions about it and you're just going to be following the line down mm -hmm. and then if we had then have you know, like a page, you know, like with 30 images of one particular, when you've gone down it, you've gone, your yes or you know, and then you look at it and go, oh yeah, that does look similar to what I'm looking at. Mm. Mm. Probably be pretty sure that that is what you've got. But at the moment, there's nothing out there that gives you sort of like a, um, a yes, no, is it this, is it that, at which you can, you know, track down um, and kind mm. of, you know, it's, it seems to be very much a, 
well, somebody who's really, really wise knows and you sort of like make a, a crack, you know, I, I think it's this. And then they say, no, 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 it's definitely that. And you think, well, why did they come to that conclusion? And I right. come to that. Right. <laughs> I think that if we have sort of like a little family tree that you can follow down yourself, I think you're going to feel much happier. Yeah. You know, it's used as a way to exclude people from the hobby. Also, when you make someone feel stupid because they don't know. Uh, yeah. what the name of it is and um yeah. and it's yeah. just a way for for people to feel superior to you and exclude you from more research in the field well yeah, I, I, think really Alex I, I think alexander you need the uh the category of solar slug that you came up with oh <laughs> yeah Ramsden. that was a lovely one, the yeah. one was. <laughs> yeah. And the, the comb over? Yes, I like that. Oh, yeah. the comb over. <laughs> <laughs> the comb over, that was another good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this one here then? <laughs> well, is it a line north south? Number one, I'd say no. Um, it's probably it looks like it's about thirty degrees off. Because yeah, yes, but I, it I is usually this... line mine up um, by tracking. Right. Yeah. So if you had the tilting sun, where mm -hmm. would you know, like the <clears throat> sun angle be? Yeah. So look at that one on the bottom down there. That's that's the comb over. Yeah, there's definitely a sun polar slug yeah. down there. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. But yeah. do do you think when when all of these images are, are posted to the um, page ultimately, and there's going to be a a, um, a criteria set for the different types, do you think we should use the wisdom of solar chat so that people have the opportunity then to cast their uh, their vote as to what they believe it is, so that that way there's no so if, if someone, if, if you do, like Karen Peter said, put down, I think this is um, a hedgerow prom or this is a, a whatever. Um, but at, at the end of all of this, um, before the, the chart is produced, everybody will have the opportunity, you know, just like a, um, to have the vote on and they just tick the box. And the, so if you get 100 people saying, well, it's a hedgerow and one person saying it's not something else, well, it's a hedgerow. Well, that, <laughs> that makes that the data even had some more input. robust. Doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Hopefully, there won't be as much uh, disparity in the shape where there has to be a guess. But yeah, yeah. that would make it even more robust data for sure. Well, I think it's inc it's inclusion to the whole group. Then you know everybody gets oh, yeah. the opportunity, so there's no need for anybody to to argue about something because they're going to have a, a say at the end of it anyway. So. Oh yeah. Before it's produced, and nothing like this has ever been done before. Right. So it'll be you know like a, a first. Hmm. Yeah. Are you guys uh, familiar with Galaxy Zoo? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Same type so, of thing, yeah. So what we're mm -hmm. trying to do is something similar, but for prominences then, instead mm -hmm. of Galaxy. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Except we won't be arguing with it about it on, on, our, <laughs> on our forum, like on Cloudy Nights, because I've been looking at all the Cloudy Nights posts regarding this, and, you know, it's every one of them is, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. This is a... Oh. Yeah. Um, Unless, you know, yeah, but none of us know what we're talking about. Right, right. And who cares if you don't know what you're talking about? We're trying to. I want the new opinion more than I. I want the new and fresh opinion pretty much more than I want the the established uh, opinion. Because if the establishment was that great, there would already be a classification of solar promises. Exactly. Um, you know, and for those that don't know, I started this forum because of the treatment I got on cloudy nights when I started this hobby. It was so horrible. And I thought, man, you guys are terrible people. So I just came over and started my own form. <laughs> and uh, if, request this one then. Uh, tilting sun. Mm -hmm. Can somebody do a post on how to get it to work, please? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's quite easy. Well, well, sounds like a job for Brian. Brian Colville, <laughs> I believe. I suppose, I don't know whether I, I could show you how to do it now um can we just well you can share whatever you want um <clears throat> what issues are we looking at Steve? where that, that that's concerning or that's that we need to is I guess there something's not doing I'm, I'm just not sure what i'm putting up a standard looking. for having the uh image aligned properly yeah uh, okay north south right. and basically that's uh, good that's handy yeah you know if if the um if, if the active regions are going you know, north and south then you know it's about 90 degrees off usually i mean it's not okay. exact but do you want me to share a screen or go yeah, you can if you want to yeah. do you know how to do that uh well <laughs> find out won't we is this a program that you open on your computer yes yeah. right okay, can well, you, you can see open that? the program and then share the screen oh, yeah not yeah go clocking 
It says you you're, you're sharing. There it there is. It is. There oh, you yeah, can see it now. All oh, right. Okay. Is that your street? Uh, so when you first open it up, it comes up like that. Mm -hmm. um, so is that the biggest it goes? So what you need to do is you first of all need to put in the date. Mm -hmm. um, what's up? Oh, no. Yeah, I've done that and it won't go any bigger. Don't know why. Um, put in the date. Hey, hubby. Usually the date that you've and the, and the time that you've actually taken your uh, mm -hmm. picture of the sun. Um, you need to set, set your latitude and your longitude um, and also what time, um, whether you, you're on the, the UT or whether you're on like daylight saving time. And also whether you've got like an alt as mount or an equatorial mount. Mm -hmm. Also, whether you've flipped, you know, the or inverted it. Um, now, to be able to copy it to um, something else, what you have to do is you have to go to graphics and open this one up because this is the one that you're actually going to be using. And I don't know why it's completely white. No. no. Exactly. So that's the time. It normally goes across. Go to graphics view. All oh, right. Okay. There you go. So once oh, you that's the create an overlay to put over your um right. over your image. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um so this is the, the graphics part is the bit that gives you um the part that you want to put into your image. Um so obviously you press the graphics view, make sure you've got all of these times and dates and everything. And you can also sit and change. I like it with um, a black background so that when I copy it onto my image, which has a, a black background, it means that all you see is the sun and not that. But you can um, set over here like the disc color. Um, so you could set it to yellow if you wanted to. Um, and then I presume when you press graphics view again, you get a yellow version. Mm -hmm. um, you, I'll put that back. Um, where's white? That's okay. Um, you can also change the, um, like the equator, you know, to be a different, I've got it set the equator at red and I've also got the limb set on red, you know, just so that you can see it a bit better. Um, oh. I can also remove these so you can sit and fiddle with this bit, but you have to keep pressing graphics view every time you want to see what you've changed. Hmm. And then when you want to, what is weird about Tilting Sun is that you need to make this as big as possible on your screen because this seems to define how many graphic pixels you get. Mm. You copy it into Photoshop for some image. If you have it really, really tiny and um, pick the graphics view, you don't get, you know, yes, you want this yeah. part, yeah. this solar diameter and pixels to be as big as you can. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then all you do is copy it to the clipboard. And then when you go into Photoshop, and click new um, and then open a new image and then paste it then you get you know the tilting sun in there hmm. i have to take off folks good to see everybody see you later Warren. Okay. we're going to end it here tomorrow. Take care, Warren. Warren. Yeah, yeah 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 hey and i was just going to add um you know when i when i do mine um I don't, I don't use tilting sun but i think it's a great tool for more exactness but I, I just align my image north south as close as possible with the SDO graphic for that date, yeah. Yeah. and then and then uh, the mount, the German equatorial mount, does the rest, and it always keeps it aligned, you know, all through the day. So I'm assuming with tilt, tilting sun at noon local time, it would be north south. Yes, it would okay. be. Okay. The the other use of tilting sun is people the libation. Yeah, yeah no, people use the it, it before viewing because if you've got a camera rotator or you've got some measurement of exactly horizontal of your camera, you rotate your camera to the exact correct position and your north is correct. Right, right, right. You don't do it, you don't do it retrospectively and overlay your image. Okay. You do it prior to the to your observing. Yeah. I've I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of people, I guess when you have a permanent observatory set up, you would use that more mm -hmm. because uh mm -hmm. you don't want to alter your 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 telescope or anything like that, I guess. Um, and I had a, another use as well. Um, I, I'm doing most of my uh, full disk imaging in uh, Altas mount. Altas mount. Mm -hmm. Altas mount, yes. And um, 
I then use the information from the tilting sun to actually rotate my images in post process to, to make them north, north, south, mm. east, west. Mm. 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 So That's you have strange. the angle from north uh, that you can see at the bottom information area there. And that makes it pretty simple to, to derotate your images mm -hmm. when you're processing them. So let's so all you, make fun of um, James Parton for thinking that two yes. o'clock is one o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, James. So, how do you, so, you set your camera exactly horizontal on your Altair's mount then? That's correct. Yep. And that's uh, quite easy to, to do. And then you Even have that as a starting point and you, you rotate your image yourself. So that's. Hmm. All right, very good. So, um, you, you uh, w the forum is up there, uh, on, on Solar Chat now. So let's get cracking. I think this is a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, if there's, you know, there won't be any financials or anything, but I'll support it if there is. And um, before we end the show, uh, if we're at a good point, mm -hmm. um, I was gonna mention that this next year, with uh, solar with the um hybrid solar eclipse in October in North America and other parts and the total solar eclipse five months later in 2023, um, we are going to be purchasing and giving away a giant pile of sunglasses again, solar glasses. Um, during the the uh, eclipse of 2017, for those that don't know, there was a big controversy on Amazon about fake solar glasses. Um, mm. uh, uh, number one, if you put on a pair of solar glasses and it's not comfortable, just take them off. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's not going to hurt you to look at the sun for three seconds to determine if your solar glasses are fake or not. Um, it's just a big deal over nothing. And the media got a hold of it here in the States and made it into a huge ordeal. And the result of that was that the liability insurance for the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project in the U.S. went from $6,000 a year to $75,000 a year um, for the same amount of liability. So we could no longer do schools. So um in the rest of the world, they're still they're still doing schools and public events, but here, uh, we those that have insurance, there's there's some people using the name that that just don't have insurance. Um, but I don't go to schools anymore after 2017 because I like to be legal and the cost is too high. But these two eclipses coming up in 2017, I made an offer to anyone that wanted it for a dozen solar glasses for free, and all you had to do was hey, that's me. See how shaky an offer that was. Uh, all you had to do was just ask for them on the internet and I would just mail them out to you. And I did. And, um, you know, we distributed about, I don't know, 200,000 pair that way. And I plan on just giving them away again for these two eclipses, uh, because it really grates my nerves when somebody sells solar glasses for $5 a piece. Um, and I know they got them if they bought them at all, they either stole them or they got them from someone who was giving them away free and then resold them. The glasses cost 28 cents a piece when you buy them. Uh, so it really bothers me when people in this in anywhere sell the solar glasses. So long story short, I'm going to give away hopefully about 300,000 pair. And a lot of that will be in Central and South America where they couldn't buy them if they wanted to. So there's going to be some expenses for that. And during our spring fundraiser, that's what the fundraiser is going to be for. The... Uh, the solar chat forum is pretty much is going strong and it's paid for for the next two years unless we have a consultant requiring problem but anyway uh next year's two seasonal fundraisers will be to to supply uh solar glasses for everybody in the world that wants them for the eclipses and also we're going to send uh kosovo our group in kosovo with pranvera our group in tunisia with dr sofian kamun who's a cardiologist in uh, tunisia who runs that group and our group in Brazil with Marcelo Salza, uh, who's a professor in Brazil. We're going to send them a chunk of cash this time uh, to do with what they want, because those are the three strongest groups that we have uh, that we support through the nonprofit. So that's what that fundraiser is going to be about. And if you guys want uh, solar glasses for your own locale, I don't know if you're going to be able to see either one of these in the UK, but wherever you are um, and you need some solar glasses, I wish you'd ask me and uh, you can have as many as you want. Um, if, if you sell them, I will hunt you down and kill you. Um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, so anybody who needs any of that kind of equipment or anything, I wish you'd let me know because that's that's what we love to do. We love to give it away and get people involved for free. 
And those of us that support the program, all of you here, thank you, are the ones that pay for it. But I consider it a really worthy expense uh, because the more people you can get into this hobby, the better off society is going to be. So did anyone else have a subject they wanted to bring up for uh, this solar chat? I'm, I'm trying to keep them all at an hour, but it's never possible. <laughs> So next month, then we'll have a report and we can all work together via private message or email or social media about the prominence classification project. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And that's it for the January solar chat get together. Adios, brothers. Thanks for coming. Bye Thank all. You. Bye bye. 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 bye.